I moved to the north to get the forest as my home. It is between these old and wise trees I can stay grounded in a world who has mostly lost the connection. A forest to me is not just a field with a lot of trees on. A forest is where you can sense the history of the place. A place that has been a home for a lot of souls through many generations. A place with a wild spirit. Just behind my parents' house in our village, not that far from our cabin, an old village road made out of old stones leads through an old forest. And I just love that place. If anything had been tough in life lately, I always find comfort in this forest. One evening when Kelle had a friend on visit, I decided to spend the night in my parents' house in the village. So I could wake up early to catch the beautiful full moon in the early morning over the lake. But I did not know that this morning would start with a nightmare. I just got woke up by sound of the forest company. And there they are, cutting the forest. It is 5.30 in the morning. This is so crazy. It's like, it's so crazy. This is people's home. And I just don't care. I'm so in shock. It is so overwhelming when someone just can take you home away. Like this. It's like seven in the morning and I can hear the machines cutting the trees around the house. And it's just like if they could do it like here, like in no warnings, no, like, like this would not happen in my wildest fantasy that it would take trees like just around our houses like this. What about the forest next to the cabin? Like, can they just come and take that in one second as well? The upcoming week was extremely stressful to me because of the unknown. I had a constant worry of how much they will take. I just pray for them to go away. I did not know if this would be a clean cut down as I've seen so many times on the mountain behind the cabin. Will this place I love so much turn into an empty field now? And the old forest road of the village. You know, the old forest road connecting the village in old, old days I talked about in one of my other videos. I actually thought they were not allowed to touch this road. And here, oh my god, I'm crying again. Here is where I used to walk down with the girls, down to the house, where I'm coming from the cabin on the forest road and then I'm walking down here towards the house. I know this is a part of living in Sweden. It is an industry, but the amount of forest I have lost in my only two years living here is worrying me. And this forest in the village had my heart. So this was extra tough because it was my home. 
The week after, I was invited to the south of Sweden, a journey that would take up to 10 hours to drive. But I didn't mind, because it was wonderful to just get a bit away and collect some new energy. I'm going to meet up with my friend Annie and her boyfriend Julian. You might know them from YouTube as well. They have two beautiful homes here in the south of Sweden. And one of them is an old off-grid cabin that just bought. A place they're dreaming of making into a real home one day. And beside that, Annie is also hosting some beautiful woman works away in their main cabin. Which is why I'm here. We are on our way to the forest, right up here, to gather some uh, nature elements for a... Uh, is it called a mandala in English? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a mandala. For a women's circle that uh, I'm hosting later today. It became so beautiful from what we just had found in the forest. And Annie had made the circle ready with a personal welcome gift for all of us. And now the three other women would soon show up and I had never met them before. So I was a bit nervous to be honest. My expectation for these four days was to meet some sweet women and have some fun. But it became way more than that. I did not even film the first two days here. There was so much to talk about, so much we have on our hearts to share, that after these two days I had already found some really soul friends. self-employed in this group and the idea of these four days was to listening and help each other but we actually did way more than that it was a group of women that were so good to celebrate each other's success as well like when any one of the days got a call from a radio that wanted to interview her we of course opened a champagne and celebrated it I am personally so tired of the old competition mentality. Being jealous on each other and put each other's down so you can give up. We all have different purpose to do on this planet. We all have different stories to tell. And what I found in this group, it is what I hope the future gonna look like. A future where we are gonna lift each other up and stand together instead.
<laughs> now we are on the way to see Annie and Julian's house, the house they have been building on. And I'm very excited. And we have, it's a bit off grid, isn't it? But yeah, like it's we, totally off grid. <laughs> we have to park the car far away and then walk for a while. <laughs> so charming. this little paradise in the middle of the forest is so <laughs> I know it's so charming <laughs> really <laughs> ended the day with a good cup of tea. Talked a bit about how it is to live in a simple cabin like this, both the ups and downs. If you want to watch our talk, head over to Annie and Julianne's channel. You will find the link in the description. I do not think that I am the only one who feels that we need to breathe a bit deeper through challenges at the moment. That it is a bit harder to keep your ground. I am so thankful for these days in the South, together with Annie and Julian, and all of the beautiful women I have met. And I just hope that I can send some of this energy out to you who is might feeling a bit alone in whatever you go through. I send you so much love and thank you for watching this video.